this patient was referred to me in 2018. So six years ago for endodontic treatment of tooth number 11, patient had all the signs and symptoms of irreversible pulpitis. So we went ahead and did this root canal for her six years ago in 2018. Here's the date, as you can see, 2018. This is before we did the root canal. Take a look here. And this was immediately after we did the root canal for her in 2018. Take a look. And here's the date, as you can see, 2018, six years ago. Patient came in today for us to look at tooth number 14. We took an x-ray of tooth number 11 and take a look. So that's tooth number 11. It has a new crown on it now. And this would be six years post-op of tooth number 11. As you can see, root canal still looks great. No peripheral looseness or anything associated with the tooth. That's tooth number six. I'll talk to you about this tooth later. <clears throat> take a look here and here's the date as you can see today so six years post-op of tooth number 11 tooth is in full function patient is asymptomatic no issues no symptoms whatsoever here's another angulation of tooth number 11 six years post-op of tooth number 11 all right so then in 2020 so four years ago patient came to see me for endodontic treatment of tooth number six so let's see tooth number six that's still tooth number 11. let me go to the tooth number six let me find tooth number six for you where are you tooth number six all right okay and here it is. So patient came in to see me for endodontic retreatment of tooth number six in 2020. And here's the date, as you can see. So uh, uh, her dentist had uh, done the root canal just a few months prior and patient continued to have pain and symptoms associated with the tooth. So we went ahead and redid the root canal for her in one appointment, went through the crown and redid the root canal for her and take a look. So when I do, um, uh, as I said, when the apical diameter is uh, over 50, I place an MTA plug. So I placed an MTA plug followed by gutta percha and sealer. So this is immediately after we did the, redid the root canal for her on tooth number six in 2020. And as you can see, here's the date. So placed an MTA plug followed by gutta percha and sealer and referred the patient back to her to our dentist okay and again it was four years ago and take a look here i have the four years post-op of tooth number six for you and here's tooth number six four years post-op of tooth number six tooth looks like has a new crown on it now so the crown that we had to drill through was replaced and here it is four years post-op of tooth number six tooth is in full function patient had no has no symptoms and here's the data as you can see I have some, as you can see, MTA extrusion here, and you can see MTA extrusion did not affect the outcome of this tooth in any negative, negative way. Uh, MTA is very, very biocompatible and behaves like bone graft material. And here's the proof. As uh, remember, we redid the root canal in one appointment. I placed the MTA plug and then got a perch and sealer all in one appointment. Uh, and look at that beautiful as i said tooth is in full function patient is asymptomatic and very happy and again here's the date all right so four years post-op of tooth number six all right then seven months ago same patient came to see me for endodontic treatment of tooth number 28 so that was seven months ago and here it is, tooth number 28, and you can see large decay into the pulp, tooth number 28. All right, so we went ahead and did the root canal for her in one appointment, and here's the date, as you can see, seven months ago. 
Okay. So we went ahead and did the root canal for her in one appointment. And here is endodontic retreatment, the endodontic treatment that we did for her in one appointment, as I said. And here's the date, as you can see, seven months ago. And this was immediately after we did the root canal for her. And again, here's the date, seven months ago. Is there a little gutta percha extrusion here? Is that going to matter? And by the way, these, these, this stuff happens accidentally. We don't do this stuff on purpose, but sometimes stuff like that happens. You know, as, as much as we strive to be perfect, and us and the Don especially, we're perfectionists, but stuff like that happens once in a while. Does gutta percha extrusion cause endodontic failure? And again, you can see that was seven months ago when we did this root canal. All right, let's look at the seven months follow-up, post-op of this tooth, and here it is. This is the seven months follow-up of the tooth, as you can see. Tooth has a new crown on it, is in full function. Zero symptoms, no peripheral lucencies or anything like that. And here's the date, as you can see, today. Seven months post-op of tooth number 28. So that gutta percha, extra gutta percha is pretty much gone now. It's not even there, but her body just ate it up. Seven months post-op of tooth number 28, tooth is in full function, patient has no symptoms. And that millimeter to gutta percha extrusion didn't cause accidental gutta percha extrusion, didn't cause endodontic failure. And again, here's the date, as you can see. Seven months post-op of tooth number 28. Excellent.